so yeah, uh, and so there are different ways you can do this question. Um, you could try to do it by looking up formulas from the textbook and maybe kind of modify them a little bit intuitively. I guess you could do it that way. Let me try to do this in the proper way by actually doing the integral. So this is what the question is asking for. What is the magnetic field at point P due to the current I flowing in the wire as shown? Uh, give your answer in terms of given variables and physical. So A is the inner radius, B is the outer radius, and numerical constants, yeah. Uh, I, I think the direction is the easier piece to answer. So this is a good um, practice of right-hand rule. So um, so there's a shortcut right-hand rule you can use to get to it. So um, where I guess you would be using the shortcut right-hand rule, recognizing this as a half of a loop, and this is another half of a loop. Um, you can do that. Let me let me uh, do the version without any shortcuts here. So one without any shortcut is one where you are basically doing the cross product in Biot-Savart's law. So Biot-Savart's law says that small contribution to magnetic field is equal to there's a numerical coefficient here, and then current times uh, dl small segment of the wire cross product with the r hat that gives you the direction and the other coefficient uh, divided by r squared. It's an inverse of square law. And the coefficient here is Coulomb constant divided by c squared. Or, you know, if you want, you could write this as a mu naught over 4 pi. Both are fine. Um, I'm trying to retain use of Coulomb constant uh, this semester. So, so you can just do this cross product here. Uh, the direction of current cross product with the r hat. So if I imagine taking, for example, uh, this segment here. So in this segment, my direction of dl goes this way in the direction of current. And uh, r hat always points from the source to the point where you are calculating the field. So this is the direction of r hat. So you just do the cross product uh, dl cross, oh wait, dl, yeah. And then, yeah, towards the circle. So, so this is the orientation of my hand that will allow me to bend my fingers in the direction of our head. So the cross product, my thumb is pointing out of the screen towards you. So, uh, so that's the direction of the cross product. So this inner half loop contributes magnetic field pointing out of the out of the screen towards you. Now, when you look at the outer loop, it goes the other way because your um, direction of DL now goes clockwise and our head is still pointing inward. So when you, uh, at our head is still pointing inward. So when you do, um, okay, my hand point to right-ish, and then uh, this is how my hand is oriented so that I can bend my finger towards the center of the circle, then my thumb points into the screen. So, so you have these two competing contributions from the uh, magnetic field from the inner loop of radius A and magnetic field from the outer loop of radius B. And this is where some sense of intuition is useful intuition that comes from the fact that magnetism is an inverse square law law. So the farther away something is, all things being same, the influence will be weaker. So, so as these two competing um, magnetic fields um, add, the term that will win out is the one that's uh, uh, coming from the inner radius, inner loop. So, um, so magnetic field overall will point out of page. Oh, and uh, uh, just so that it doesn't look like I forgot about these two segments. These two segments are um, interesting in that they contribute no magnetic field at this point. Watch. So at this point, this is the direction of DL and the direction of R head points this way. They are anti-parallel. So when you do DL cross R, the 
angle here is 180 degrees, sine of 180 degrees is zero. So, um, so this contributes to no magnetic field at this point. And same thing with this segment here, DL point towards the center, and that's the same direction as R hat. So cross product of these two vectors will give you just zero. So as you're doing this calculation, the only thing you have to worry about are the two uh, semicircular loops. Those are the only uh, current distributions that will contribute to magnetic field in the center. I mean, these do create magnetic field, uh, but just not at the center point. So, okay, the second part of the question, field point and has magnitude. So this is where you have to just uh, go through the calculation. We have Bo sub r long. So for the total magnetic field due to the uh, total magnetic field at P, due to the entire current distribution is going to be an integral. I'll integrate uh, along the path DL. Um, and that integral will, let me set it up. It looks like this. Uh, um, so I, let me start out with the, just the first uh, symbolic expression. This is integral around the entire current loop. Um, the coefficient times, the i is going to be a constant. It doesn't change times. DL cross R hat is something I'll have to work out. And same deal with the R squared. Now, as you look at this uh, um, schematic expression, that's a reminder of, a, more of a reminder of what to do the actual um, thing you can calculate with, I hope you see this uh, simplification you will get. For the integral along the inner loop, the distance r remains constant. It remains at a. So if I could do the integral for this portion separately from the integral over this portion, it'll give me some expression that's uh, relatively easy to deal with. So I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to split up this integral that I'm doing along DL into one portion, that's the inner loop and then the other portion, the outer loop. And as I mentioned, along this portion, there's no contribution to magnetic field, so I can skip those. So I am going to be integrating around the uh, uh, loop of radius A. Um, same coefficients, k over c squared. And I can plug in some values as I do this now. I times... Um, DL cross R hat. And here, instead of R squared, I know the distance, that's A, for all the points along the along this path, starting from here. So I can just say divided by A squared. And let me, uh, let me finish writing the second um, portion of the contribution, plus the integral around the loop of radius B. Uh, k over c squared i dl cross r hat divided by, and here um, I the radius for this loop is b, so I can say b squared. Now I can do some simplifications in situ, in place. So um, for each one of these points, I hope you see that dl and r hat are always perpendicular. It's kind of the nice thing about this particular geometry that, um, that we are dealing with the current that's tangent to the circle and uh, the radial direction is always perpendicular to the tangent direction. So, so in terms of the magnitude of DL and R hat, DL cross R hat, it's always going to be DL times um, R hat because it's, uh, uh, it's just always perpendicular or perpendicular along the entire path. Now, that's the magnitude. And in terms of the directions, that's uh, exactly what we worked out here. So we could uh, say, okay, out of page is positive. Then, um, then this uh, integral will give me a positive value. And, uh, and if I 
um, modify the second term so that, okay, I'm going to be subtracting what I get from my second integral, then I can work out the integral here, just worrying about the magnitudes. The directions have already all been accounted for. And here it's uh, nice because tail cross R hat is always either, it's perpendicular to the screen. So I can describe that as I being, either as being positive or negative. So with those in mind, this DL cross R hat, if we agree that these expressions are going to be the scalar indicating the magnitude, then DL cross R hat is just DL because it's that's the only quantity there that that's not a unit vector. R hat is a unit vector, that's length one. And same thing with the second expression. So this DL cross R hat, it's just, DL, uh, the length integral. And this is the final piece here. As you look at this integrand, I hope you see that um, nothing here depends on the, uh, everything here is constant. Uh, this is a, these are constant, current is constant, distance is constant. So what this really is, this integral, it really just applies to this DL um, around the loop. So, uh, so it's this integral over this half a circle loop of DL. And so I don't actually have to do this integral explicitly without doing it. I just know this is one half of a circumference. So it, it is, uh, which is equal to pi times a. So um, <laughs> we get this, uh, we get situations like this, uh, often when we do magnetism and electricity. You know, we set up the integral, we are all ready to do the integral, and then suddenly, oh, we don't need to. Um, now, this is more common as we apply Gauss's law and Ampere's law, where we pretend to do all this integral with no intention of actually doing the integral. Um, here, I had every intention to do the integral, and there are situations where you will actually have to do the integral, especially when applying Bio Savart's law. But in this particular case, I don't need to. So the first term will simply become k over c squared times, um, oh, so pi a, one factor of will cancel one factor of a, so this will be i times pi over a minus um, the second, so when I do this integral over dl, it's gonna give me pi times b. So um, it'll be ke over c squared times i pi, and one factor of b will cancel one factor of b squared from denominator, so i pi over b. So this is it. Um, I can simplify it a little bit. I can factor some things. Uh, in fact, let me plug this uh, into the question and just factor it in C2. Uh -oh. So magnetic field points out of page. And here I would just say, okay, uh, I'm gonna factor out k, uh, pi ke times i over c squared. So uh, do I have, okay. Pi times ke times i uh, divided by c squared. And then after factoring those out, I have one over a minus one over B. So that's it, I hope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so as it turns out at the very end, the calculation isn't too complicated, but you know, this setting up this, it's, a, it's challenging. Um, unless you've seen it done or unless you've had some time to think it through, uh, I can imagine this part uh, tripping up people, which is why I wanted to do this question.